Hello YouTube and welcome back to another one of my videos on how to use the CRP5. As you can see on your screen right now we are going to be looking at how to calculate density altitude. I'm going to first of all just describe what density altitude is and then I'll be showing you how to do two or three examples on the CRP5 followed by uh, a bit of a cheats way of doing it using a calculator. So first things first, you've probably all heard of density altitude, but what is it? Well, density altitude is the altitude relative to the standard atmosphere conditions at which the air density would be equal to the indicated air density at the place of observation. Sounds a bit confusing. That is pretty much the official definition. But what does it mean? What it means basically is density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. So assuming that we have an international standard atmosphere, so we have 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, 1225 grams per cubic meter, and uh, sea level pressure of 1013, and we also have a standard air density lapse rate and temperature lapse rate of 2 degrees per thousand feet, then density altitude should equal pressure altitude. But if the temperature is non-standard, then the density altitude will be higher or lower than the pressure altitude, depending on whether the temperature is higher or lower, as we'll see in a second. In other words, the density altitude is simply the altitude at which the aeroplane feels it's flying. So just because you are physically flying at, say, 5,000 feet above sea level, doesn't mean that the air around you is always going to be the same as that found at 5,000 feet above sea level in a standard atmosphere. The air at 5,000 feet could be significantly denser or significantly less dense than that normally found at that altitude depending upon the temperature. And the reason is that as temperature and altitude increase the air density decreases. So as you can see from the diagram on your screen as you go higher up into the atmosphere there is less gravity. Gravity holds most of the air down towards the surface of the earth so the higher we go away from the surface the less dense the air becomes which is why as you see from one of my previous videos we have to fly at a faster true airspeed for any given indicated airspeed simply because there are less air molecules at altitude. Now this also happens for temperature as well cold air as you know is more dense and is very good for performance it's good for engines and it's good for airflow over the airframe same with cars as well it always gives better performance for for any engine that requires oxygen to be mixed with fuel and combusted uh, hot air is much less dense uh, therefore there is less oxygen for the engine so the engine doesn't perform as well you get less power from the engine and from an aircraft's point of view if the temperature is warm you also get less airflow over the airframe and over the wings so you, again you have to fly faster so it gives you quite a fairly large performance penalties on a hot day so here I've got a couple of photographs that I found on the internet uh, from a couple of airfields in America I'm guessing where at certain airfields where you have a high um, elevation of the airfield probably four five six thousand feet and above uh, when performance is important especially if you're taking off on a fairly short grass field the, the the density altitude is incredibly important you can see here we've got two altitudes shown seven thousand nine hundred feet and nine thousand four hundred feet what that means is that if we take the example on the left hand side uh, I don't know what the the elevation of that airfield is but let's say it was 5,000 feet or well, the air around the airfield is equivalent to that found at nearly 8,000 feet and if we look at the one on the right hand side the density altitude there is nearly nine and a half thousand feet now that's quite extreme because depending on what the the elevation of the airfield is or regardless of what the elevation of the airfield is the air found on that airfield on that day is equivalent to 9,400 feet that means that for certain light aircraft with three passengers and four tanks the aircraft is already pretty much at its service ceiling before you've even taken off so your performance is going to be severely restricted um, this has led to multiple incidents both fatal and non-fatal uh, over the years so an understanding of what density altitude is is incredibly important uh, for those of you living in the UK density altitude is very rarely an issue uh, simply because we don't really have any high elevation airports in the UK and we certainly don't really have temperatures that warrant any issues um, but I would however still be very cautious if you're taking off on a fairly short grass field um, with four passengers, load, cargo, fuel um, 
in the middle of summer on those crazy days when the temperatures do in the UK occasionally get to about 30 degrees Celsius, you could find that your takeoff distance is significantly increased over that that you'd get most of the year. So understanding how to calculate it is very important. So let me just go to my trusty CRP5 here and you can see that we have a density altitude box if I spin this around here I've got a, a window called density altitude in thousands of feet so let's do three examples and I'll just show you how this works so for the density altitude calculations we will be using the airspeed window so for density altitude we use the window next to the density altitude window which is this airspeed window and in a later video when I do true altitude calculations we'll be using the altitude window down here okay so for density altitude we're going to use the airspeed window now on my CRP5 just out of interest my actual CRP5 um, I've actually drawn an arrow in permanent marker from this window pointing to this window so I know which window to use so I don't accidentally use this one uh, you obviously can't do that because you can't take it into an exam with you but once you've done your exams or at least for, for practice you can that's what I do anyway so question number one just to prove the point if the pressure altitude is 5000 feet and the temperature is ISA that is to say we are in an international standard atmosphere what is the density altitude now if we're in a international standard atmosphere I would expect my pressure altitude to be equal to my density altitude uh, so let's prove that so on the airspeed window here I'm going to set the temperature in an ISA atmosphere at 5000 feet so first question is what is the temperature in a, in a standard atmosphere at 5000 feet well the standard temperature lapse rate is about 2 degrees for every 1000 feet so 5 times 2 is 10 and at sea level it should be 15 degrees Celsius so minus the 10 it should be 5 degrees Celsius it should be 5 degrees Celsius at 5000 feet so let's set that up so here's my 5000 here and note again on the airspeed window um, note that the temperatures increase to the left and they decrease to the right notice this is plus 50 and this is minus 40 be aware of that so uh, let's see 5,000 feet and it should be plus 5 degrees so there I go 0 and 5 degrees lined up with 5,000 feet and if I check my density altitude look at that the arrow points exactly to 5,000 feet exactly as I expect it let's try another example let's suppose it's a really really hot day in the middle of summer and the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and we are at a pressure altitude of 4,500 feet let's set that up so on the left hand side here is the airspeed window and at 4500 feet which is there's three four there's about four and a half thousand feet there I'm gonna set up 30 degrees Celsius and again this is zero and this is plus 50 so there is plus 30 degrees so again 0 10 20 30 degrees at four and a half thousand feet now note that the temperature is significantly warmer than I'm expecting at four and a half thousand feet I'd be expecting the temperature to be around about five degrees or so if it's plus 30 degrees Celsius then the temperature is significantly warmer by about uh, 25 degrees or so uh, and again if we look at the density altitude window it's telling me that the density altitude, even though I'm physically located potentially at 4,500 feet above sea level, notice that my density altitude or the air around the aircraft is equal to that found at 7,000 feet, uh, possibly over 7,000 feet. Again, the CRP5 is accurate to within about five, maybe three or four hundred feet, 500 feet. So don't worry too much. I'll show you an equation in a minute that allows you to calculate it to much higher accuracies. So again, always do a good check. If the temperature is warmer than you expect, you're expecting a density, al density altitude to be higher than the pressure altitude. And that's exactly what we get, so I'm happy with that. Uh, let's do another example, this time with a colder temperature. So if the temperature is less than ISA, I'm expecting the density altitude to be less than my pressure altitude. So let's see if that works. Let's say we have a pressure altitude of 7,000 feet and the temperature is minus 10. Okay, so what temperature should it be at 7,000 feet? Well, 7 times 2 is 14, 15 minus 14 is 1. So I'm expecting at 7,000 feet in a standard atmosphere, the temperature should be 1 degree Celsius. 
but on this day the temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius so it's 11 degrees colder so I'm expecting my density altitude to be less than my pressure altitude in other words I'm expecting my density altitude to be less than 7,000 feet so let's see uh, 7,000 feet here there's five six seven and I'm going to set minus 10 up and there's a minus 10 to the right of the zero and there's my minus 10 degrees set up with 7,000 feet and again if I look at my density altitude window I can see that the arrow is pointing to about five and a half thousand feet or so so at minus 10 degrees my density altitude is about one and a half thousand feet less than my pressure altitude which is a good thing that will give me much better performance than it would do on a standard day so that's very simply how to use the CRP5 for density altitude. It's very straightforward. Uh, you've got your airspeed window. Again, your altitudes or your pressure altitudes are in the middle of the window and you've got your temperatures on the outside. Note temperatures decrease to the right and increase to the left. And then you simply just read off your density altitude. One last thing I want to do as a bit of a, uh, just a, an exercise is if we look at this diagram here, we can ask ourselves what is the temperature we can work backwards here we have admittedly not a great diagram but here we have um, another density altitude of 9400 feet and you can see here that the the sign tells us the airport elevation is 6750 feet so the pressure altitude assuming 1013 would be 6750 feet but the density altitude is nearly nine and a half thousand feet so you can see that the density altitude is significantly higher nearly three thousand feet higher than the pressure altitude so we can question what is the temperature of that airfield on that day uh, we simply work backwards we can put the density altitude in the density altitude window which we know is nine thousand four hundred feet so I'm just gonna set that up to about nine and a half thousand to within some degree of accuracy there's going to be a bit of an error in here. That's close enough. And what I can then do is look at the inner scale here. And I can see that if my density altitude is 9,400 feet, then at 6,750 feet, which is going to be, or well, there's 5, 6, 6, 7, 50 is about there or so. Okay then you can see that the temperature has got to be there's 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, about 25 degrees Celsius so at a pressure altitude of 6750 feet if the outside air temperature is 25 degrees Celsius which is a lot warmer than you would ordinarily expect then my density altitude is going to be 9400 feet okay simple as that now one last thing I want to point out is uh, if you don't like using the CRP5, which you should do because it's brilliant, uh, you can use an equation if you wish. Sorry, where's my presentation gone? Uh, there it is. Sorry, I don't want to make you epileptic. Um, there we go. There is a calculation you can use and you simply take the pressure altitude and you plus 118.8 multiplied by the ISA deviation. So work out what the temperature should be at your pressure altitude. Note what the temperature is. Work out the difference between them. That's the ISA deviation. And then multiply that by this number, 118.8. You can use 120. It's close enough. I think the CRP5 is calibrated to use 120. Uh, for ATPL exams, I've heard that you're supposed to use 118.8. It is the official number to use. However, the spread of answers in the exams is such that, as far as I'm aware, you can use 120. Um, now note that this is always a plus. Sometimes you might see this written as pressure altitude plus or minus. If you always plus that, notice that if the ISA deviation is negative, that is to say that it's colder than usual, you'll have a plus minus. So this plus minus becomes a minus and your density altitude ends up being less than the pressure altitude. So don't worry about making sure that's plus or minus. Always have a plus there and if the ISA deviation is negative, just put in 118.8 times minus whatever the number is. And there's your answer. Okay. Well, that is how to use the CRP5. For density altitude calculations, any comments, uh, put them in the description below, or in the comments box below even. And I'll be back fairly soon to do a video on how to calculate true altitudes. And that's a bit of a tricky one. See you soon. Bye.